So the problem that we're confronted with is that what we would like to do is to figure out how to handle the limit of sine t over t as t approaches zero. Now what's t here? t is a number. Remember that. This is the big pitch I've been making. We're thinking of t as a number. If, on the other hand, you feel more comfortable thinking in terms of traditional trigonometry, and let's face it, the more background you've had in traditional trigonometry, the more comfortable you're going to feel using it, let's simply agree to do this. That if it bothers you to think of this as a length divided by a length, etc., and that this is a length or a number, let's agree that we will go back to angles but use radian measure. Why? Because if the angle is measured in radians, the sine of the angle t radians is the same as the number, the sine of the number t. Well, again, here's how this problem is tackled. What we do is we mark off the angle of t radians. Remember that we have a unit circle. And what we very cleverly do is we catch our wedge, our circular wedge, between two right triangles. Again, without making a big issue over this, notice that this length is sine t, this length is cosine t, so the area of a small triangle is sine t times cosine t over 2. See, sine t times cosine t over 2. Now, on the other hand, since that's caught in our wedge, what is the area of our wedge? Well, since the area of the entire circle is pi, see pi r squared and r is 1, since the area of the entire circle is pi, and we're taking what? t of the two pi. So there are two pi radians in a circle. So the sector of the circle that we have, it's t over 2 pi of the entire circle. And by the way, this is done more rigorously and carried out in detail in the notes. Let me point out that if we insisted on working with degrees, instead of t over 2 pi, we just would have had t over 360. Because you see, if we're dealing with degrees, the entire angular measure of the circle is 360 degrees, and we would have had t over 360. But here we've used the fact that we're dealing with radians. Okay? And finally, the bigger triangle, which includes the wedge, has as its base 1, so that's the radius. And since the tangent is side opposite over side adjacent, this length is tangent t. And so what we have is what? That sine t cosine t over 2 must be less than this, which in turn must be less than this. Multiplying through by 2 and dividing through by sine t. And by the way, this hinges on the fact that t is positive. Again, in our notes, we treat the case where t is negative to arrive at the same result. Remembering that tan t is sine t over cosine t, we wind up with this result. And now observing that as t approaches 0, as t approaches 0, this approaches 1. This also approaches 1. And t over sine t is caught between these two. We get that the limit of t over sine t as t approaches 0 is 1. Now, of course, since this limit is 1, the limit of the reciprocal of this will, uh, will be the reciprocal of this. But what's very nice about the number 1 is that it's equal to its own reciprocal. In other words, what we've now shown is that the limit of sine t over t as t approaches 0 is 1.